the leaders of globalization is all of us, the young, the young people, who really need to take this on board. Um, on the national level, uh, globalization on the national level, how we are contributing to a globalized world. At the moment, I would say that we are tending towards being followers. Um, because for us to be effective in having a voice globally, now, we have to be integrity with very, very basic things. One of the things that we have to be integrity with is our electoral system. Uh, we really need to ensure that it is clean and we can compete globally uh, in the sense that when people speak to our leaders, they need to have the confidence that they were appointed and elected with the people's mandate without any uh, fraud in that process. And when that process is clean, then we have this um, opportunity to hold others to account. When we are not in integrity ourselves, we can't hold others to account. For example, if you have a parent, if you are a parent and uh, if, let's say you are a parent and you are smoking, you can't tell a child don't smoke because you are out of integrity yourself because you are smoking and then you can't tell a child don't smoke. Similarly, if we want to have, we want to be leaders in the world, on the world stage where our voice really matters, uh, very basic things like human rights, um, electoral integrity, these things need to be adhered to. And all of us need to hold the uh, Electoral Commission, for example, to account. Because we are the people, and it's, it's actually the voices of the young people that need to be heard. Um, we don't really need to be on, on all things we can make up our mind. All of us are adults, and we can make up our mind where things are at and how we should be able to contribute and we should contribute positively to the discourse and not really um, uh, be too, what do you call it, extreme on one end or the other. So basically that's all I have to say about where we are at and about globalization and early leaders and followers. Uh, would anyone like to ask me anything about this afternoon? Or any other topic? Yeah, it's 10 minutes, so we actually finish before a long time minutes. So you guys can ask questions right now. You guys want to. So, <laughs> sorry? Anyway, um, uh, wait, before you guys ask questions, stand up, give out your name and your uh, patient perhaps here. It's cool, okay? uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, My name is Zaid, uh, I'm a student. Really student, Monash, all student. Um, law, all arts, politics, something like that. Okay, uh, you, you mentioned about um, students and nations overseas have better networks and better skills. And when they return to nation, they have an advantage. But uh, don't you think that globalization has a facet, a negative one, when uh, brain drain is in the picture? Students don't actually, I mean, students when they graduate in Melbourne, for example, many of them will not return to Malaysia. You would stay here and the skills and the network they have here mm. is here, not bad in Malaysia. What do you have to say about the problem of green green? I just want to put a little context if I yes. can. There are about one yes. million, according to the World Bank report, there's about one million uh, people overseas, uh, up to 1.4, according to some uh, of the right? Yes, and 80% are Chinese, okay? So that, I mean, there's a racial dynamics to that as well, and more and more Malays and Indians are actually immigrating as well. So, I just wanted to comment on that, because that, I think that if we don't discuss about this part of globalization in Malaysia, we're actually missing a big part of what uh, Malaysia is actually facing. Thank you. I think um, the discourse in Malaysia with, with regard to the diaspora has to shift. Um, the current discourse in Malaysia is, oh, those who leave the country, uh, you know, less of Malaysian, less Malaysian because they've left the country. I think that has to change. For example, in uh, one of the presidential candidates, sorry, the Republican nominees for the presidential ticket uh, is Rick Santoro. Now he is of Italian heritage, and technically, if he wanted to, he could apply for EU passport <coughs> and be <coughs> Italian. And um, in that case, he can also vote in both the American and the elect Italian elections. Uh, countries like France and Italy, they have. They have reserved seats in Parliament for their 
their overseas um, constituents. And one of the reasons why this is so useful for the country, a country like Malaysia is if we have a country like Malaysia where we have so many Malaysians who are overseas. Um, for example, I'll give you an example today, Bursay will be held in 85 cities and 35 countries around the world. Now this is quite amazing because we have people in, um, I didn't know we had people in Malmo, Sweden, and I didn't know we had people in Wichita, uh, and things like that. So anyway, the point is, if we engage the overseas Malaysians, and in this globalized context, you are Malaysian wherever you are in the world. So why can't you contribute back to Malaysia, even though you are in Melbourne, or you are in Malmo, or you are in uh, Colombo, or you are in uh, uh, Pyongyang? You can still contribute something back to Malaysia. And a lot of the, the reason why the Italians, for example, give out, uh, have a parliamentary seat for the overseas constituents is, Italy gets a lot of FDI from the network they forge with um, their diaspora in America and in you know, other places in the world. And it's a very useful thing. And why not, why not give them just one seat in parliament or two seats in parliament? Because at least their voice is heard. At least they can have a say of, on what's happening back home and share their concerns. Of 222 seats in our parliament, I don't see why we can't give one seat to overseas constituents. That, that's one of the things. Uh, it's not part of the Versailles demands, it's my personal opinion. But uh, that could be a way of having a more inclusive Malaysia and embracing globalization in a sense. Does this answer your question? Yep. Yep, sir. Salam sejahtera to all. My name is Raj. Uh, I practice law in Australia. I used to practice law for about 10 years in Malaysia. <coughs> I had a good opportunity to study in England, Malaysia, and now in Australia. So I have a really worldly uh, perspective on certain things. We're talking about leadership in globalization. Um, and true enough, I totally agree with you that you need to inculcate more leaders. But when you talk about globalization in itself, <coughs> the problem here is uh, with the internet, which enables globalization to an exponential uh, growth level we haven't seen before. How are you going to rationalize the values? Because concepts of freedom, democracy, concepts of transparency and openness um, is very different in different countries. Uh, no, I'm not going to be uh, echoing uh, my beloved Tun Mahathir and saying that Eastern values is superior to Western values, but there's a lot of truth in that, because where we come from, we have different ways of addressing certain issues. We have different ways in addressing our adults, our elders, uh, different ways of uh, respecting our monarch. Uh, these cultural perspectives may be totally different in how they apply in Western democracies. So as a potential leader in this globalized world today, what is your opinion on how should we rationalize and balance these two competing notions of democracy? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, one of the things that we have to be aware of as well is um, many things, everything in the world, for example, everything in the world is built on um, a conversation that was had sometime in the past. I'll give you an example. You know now North Korea is, um, and South Korea is divided at the 50, 50, 55th parallel. What happened was uh, some smart ally in the army said that hey, we're having a war and probably the best way to resolve this is we cut the country in half at the 55th parallel. So someone had this conversation, right? And now we have North and South Korea. So it started with uh, one person having this idea and then uh, we'll just cut the country in half. And a lot of these things are not re-evaluated after a while. So we, we get stuck in, in fixed ways of being uh, through, through, through time. Another example, another example I want to give you is, um, why is the size of the rocket that went to the moon the same, uh, that particular size and that particular dimension? You know what was this, the, the reason why they had to build a rocket that slender, that whatever it is, that dimension? It was because of Roman roads. Did you know that? Do you know that the rocket that went to the moon was dictated by the size of Roman roads? Because when they built it,